Okay, so I just received another batch of eggs today. Um, in particular, I've got Zenrolobias Pataxel. Now, just looking at these eggs, um, they were collected on the 16th of the 4th, and they're not due to hatch for another month uh, because they've got an incubation period of roughly two to three months. So in theory, I shouldn't even be looking at these eggs for at least another four weeks. However, I've just examined the packet on the outside quickly and some of the eggs that are sticking to the bag, they look eyed up to me, so I'm a bit confused. Now, what happens is when you're collecting your eggs from the fish tank, sometimes there has been eggs in the peat that has been sitting there for weeks or even months and you can miss them. So every time you go around collecting eggs, you could be placing some of these older eggs in with your batch. So normally I wouldn't mess around with the eggs, but I'm going to open this particular packet because there's a few of them that look eyed up. Um, that means that they at least four weeks in advance of what they should be. So this is a valuable lesson when you are storing your eggs that keep an eye on them. Keep an eye on them on a weekly basis uh, just to make sure that they're not eyeing up and that the peat is still in a moist condition. Now, after I've opened up this bag, and if I'm not going to wet them, I'm going to put a drop of water, just a drop, inside the bag, just to make sure that the peat remains moist. It's as I expected. Um, I've only poured out about half the bag and gone through some of the eggs, and it's only one or two of the eggs that have eyed up. Uh, the rest are developing quite nicely. So I'm going to put them all back in the bag, uh, put a drop of water in there to keep them moist. Uh, because they're clearly not ready yet. Even although there's one or two ready, um, I risk losing the batch if I try and wet the whole lot now. So I'm going to put them back in the bag and put it into storage for another three to four weeks. And in about four weeks time, I will check the bag again. Now about three days ago, I spotted that the eggs have eyed up. Um, when I say that they've eyed up, it's actually not correct. The eggs went really dark. They were a, a light brownish color, but they all of a sudden went black. Now, they're quite difficult to spot in the peat. And because I couldn't see the eyes, but the eggs had gone black, I wasn't going to chance it. I didn't want them just uh, dissolving in the peat. So I quickly threw them in uh, the containers and they hatched literally within about three minutes. So yes, the eggs of this species turn very quickly from a light brown color to a dark black color. So I couldn't actually see if they had eyed up and my hunch had paid off. Now, the one thing that really shocked me about this species is that the eggs were small, but the fry were very, very large when they hatched and they were feeding on brine shrimp within hours of hatching. So I've had them now in these two containers for about three days. So I'm going to remove them from these containers and place them into fresh water and I'm going to re-dry the peat and check if there's any other eggs that still need to be hatched. Alright, so I'm going to give you a little bit more information on Xenrobias pataxo. This species was previously classified as Simpso Sineth. <laughs> I can't even pronounce it. Um, I'm going to try and read it off. I can't even pronounce this word, so you, you can look it up yourself. Um, it was classified as a, a different species. Now, this species is actually found on the east coast of Brazil. Now, when I say east coast, I don't literally mean on the coast. It's further inland and it is found, or it was found in a previously forested area. But uh, unfortunately, these forests and bush and scrubland is getting cut down at a phenomenal rate. Now, I've actually visited this entire area and I can tell you that everything is getting cut down to make way for housing, farming and what have you. So it's not going to be long before this species is uh, completely wiped out. Now, many of the species of killifish on this stretch of coast uh, is actually very, very endangered just because of the land development. So if you can get this fish into the hobby as fast as possible and try and get them to other breeders because 
I suspect that this species in five to ten years will no longer be available from the wild and you will only be able to find it within the hobby itself. As far as killifish goes, this is a bit of a strange one. It's a very peaceful killifish, but, and this is a big but, every now and again you'll get a male in the batch that will go berserk and it will kill all the females for no reason. Now, this also goes for the female. As I've said, they are generally peaceful, but it is known that every now and again, that some of the females can go completely berserk and kill all the males in the tank. So when you first put them in the tank, you need to keep a really close eye on them. Um, if they get along, fine. Uh, but I suspect that you are gonna have to separate the males and females from each other and only place them together when you want to breed them. Now, sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't. This is just gonna be trial and error. Now, this fish is very, very easy to breed. Uh, it's in fact a prolific spawner and you will get hundreds and hundreds of eggs off uh, a trio of these fish. Uh, they actually mature within about six weeks and will start breeding at about six to seven weeks. Now, because they're an annual fish, if you leave the male and female in together, uh, you'll only get roughly one breeding season out of them. If you keep them separated, you might get them to stretch to two years. Now, as I've said, this is an annual killifish and their pools and streams dry up once a year. So they, in the wild, they generally only have a lifespan of about a year. But in an aquarium with careful maintenance, you may get two years out of them. This fish is a substrate spawner. Uh, so you're gonna have to place a jar of peat or coconut fiber inside the tank, uh, deep enough for the fish to dive in and lay their eggs in. And obviously every week or two weeks, you take the jar out and dry the peat out and check for eggs. And as I've said previously, once they get going, they will produce hundreds of eggs. Now you can incubate this peat dry uh, for about two to three months and keep them roughly at a temperature of 24 to 25 degrees Celsius. On my website, protropicals.com, I have information on how you can incubate and hatch annual killifish eggs. I will be making a video on this later. This is a, an extremely easy killifish to keep. You can use a small tank for a pair, uh, nine liters, but I suggest you go slightly bigger, maybe 12 liters, and you will be able to keep a, a trio in there with lots of hiding places for the females. And of course, a spawning pot. Uh, you can do a water change maybe once a week. Don't do a big water change because killifish generally do not like uh, getting the environment disturbed once they're in breeding mode. Now the only filtration I use in my tanks is sponge filters and I have bare glass bottom tanks. Um, I just provide lots and lots of woolen mops for the females to hide in. I don't pay particular attention to the pH or the water hardness. I find that uh, the, the hardness out of the Scottish water here is just perfect for my killifish. But ideally you want to keep the pH between 6.5 and 7. Water temperature doesn't seem to be too much of an issue either. Uh, anything between 22 and 27 degrees is acceptable. Now, when it comes to food, this is a bit more tricky. Um, they will eat almost everything. I mean, they, they are, they, they're quite greedy fish. But here's my little warning, do not feed with bloodworm. Um, I've spoken to a few hobbyists now that breed this particular killifish, and they're all telling me the same thing. Bloodworm will kill off this particular species very, very quickly. I don't know what's causing this, and it seems to be more related to live bloodworm. It's perhaps that bloodworm carries some sort of bacteria or disease that affects this species more than others, or possibly this species cannot digest bloodworm that well. I don't know, but all I do know is that a lot of breeders are having mass die-offs after feeding bloodworm, so it's best just to stay away from it. So there's four subspecies within the Xenerola bias group. There is Pataxo, Cricarensis, Isaac Stoney, and last of all, Myersi. Now, they are very, very close in pattern, shape, and size. Um, there's a few little differences on whether the fish has spots or how the banding is, but they all look very, very similar. 
and they're all found roughly in the same drainage basin on the east coast of Brazil. Now just a point of interest here, the Zenrolobias pataxo actually got its name from a local Indian tribe that lived in the area um, and the name was transferred to this species obviously where it was found. Uh, I have mentioned this before, this is an annual killifish with a lifespan of roughly a year to a year and a half, which can be stretched to two years. Males, they get to about 3.2 centimeters and females get roughly 2.6 centimeters. The fish is also known as being a benthopelagic feeder, which means it feeds basically anywhere in the water column. So it will take food from the bottom, from the middle of the water and from the top. Once again, this is a really easy species to keep in spawn and I recommend it for beginners. Um, they lay hundreds and hundreds of eggs. But a curiosity of this particular species is that a large proportion of them turn out to be albino. Now, once you start getting albino fry, start removing the albinos from the rest of the population because they grow a lot slower. And because they're smaller in size, uh, they will be feeding slower. The larger fry will just dominate them and they will end up dying. My last comment on this particular species is that this is a very, very poorly uh, researched species. And as I've said, they're going extinct at the rate of knots in the wild. And it's not going to be long before the four subspecies within this group are all going to be disappeared from planet Earth. Um, so any information you have on the species, um, please leave a comment below or please send me an email via my website. Um, we need to catalog many of these species before they go extinct. In fact, thousands of species already disappeared and we have no information on them whatsoever. Uh, even the Brazilian government is now concerned about this particular species and they are taking steps to try and safeguard the last remaining pockets of this particular killifish.